Hey, welcome back everybody. Today in this video, this is something that a lot of my viewers have been asking for. So we're gonna take a look at the history of the Ford V8 engines going all the way back to the beginning and bringing us up to more modern times. The first year for the Ford V8 was 1932. And most of you know that that was the infamous flathead V8. The flathead V8 was an engine that had the valves in the block. For its time, it was very revolutionary and it served a really good purpose because up until that point, pretty much everybody was running four cylinders and six cylinders. They didn't really have the V configuration of, of the engine. There were some other V8s from some other manufacturers and some, some European stuff and even a few sparsely spread out domestic V8s, but nothing was mass produced at this point. Ford was really at the forefront of mass producing the first V8 engine, which was the Ford Flathead. Now in its day, it was revolutionary and it actually was a forerunner to the modern V8. Really was the most powerful engine and made the fastest cars of the day. We're not going to spend a lot of time on the flathead. I'm sure there's there's a few flathead gurus out there that you could find a lot of content on YouTube surrounding the flathead. But really, by today's standards, the flathead was a very poor design in that it, it just had really poor airflow in and out of the engine. And the horsepower numbers were, were just not really that good. Some of them even had less than 100 horsepower. I think the highest horsepower versions were less than 200 horsepower. They were in the, in the 120, 130 range. So, but that was the predecessor. That was from 1932 to 1953. In the early 50s, uh, 1953, Ford discontinued the Flathead V8 because a lot of other manufacturers at that point had actually produced V8 engines that were, that were making much more power than the Flathead in the overhead valve pushrod design. And so Ford realized they needed to come up with something that was going to be able to compete with the other manufacturers that was better than the Ford Flathead. So in 1954, Ford introduced their Y block. Now the, the, the reason that they called it the Y block is because it was a skirted block. It had deep skirts that went down below the main caps. And so the, the block looking at it from the front actually looked like a Y. Uh, the Y block was a very durable design. Common was the 292 and the 312. They had some Lincoln and some Mercury versions of it that were different cubic inches, but it was basically the same engine. One of the unusual features of the Y block was the design of the intake ports on the heads. Instead of running from top to bottom, they were side to side, as you can see here in this picture. And that was one of the unique things about the Y block. Why Ford did that? It's a mystery, really don't know. The over under type intake port, but the Y block was a very durable engine for its day. And it, it was a, a decent design engine, although it wasn't a powerhouse, it was durable and reliable. And so it served its purpose. The Y block had its run from 1954 all the way through 1962. Now in 1962, Ford came out with a new design, which is what we know today as the Windsor blocks. They had a 221 cubic inch engine that was very similar to the small blocks that we know from the 70s and 80s. They also had a 260 cubic inch engine that they put in production cars. The 260 was actually pretty potent for its day in the performance trim of the 260 and some of the earlier Fords, it could make up to 260 horsepower. That's one horsepower per cubic inch. That was pretty revolutionary for that time. The 260 was the same engine configuration as the infamous 289 and 302. In 1963, 
Ford introduced a variation of the 260, which was 289 cubic inches, and most everybody is familiar with the 289. The 289 had a long run. It had a lot of different variations. They had a hypo version of it that made over 300 horsepower. In 1968, Ford took the 289 and they added an eighth inch stroke to it and they made it, turn, they, they bumped the cubic inches up to 302. Now this is the infamous 302, which had a four inch bore and a three inch stroke. They bumped the stroke up to three inches to make it 302 cubic inches. Ford used this 302 in everything. I mean, every car line, Ford, Lincoln, Mer Mercury, pickup trucks, everything. It was, it was, they made millions of these things. And so they were actually very popular. The Windsor designed engine, the 302, is a very durable, very, very popular and very durable engine design. And it proved itself to be one of the best smaller cubic inch engines that Ford ever produced in their history. It, it has, it was a very, very good engine. And it is by far one of the most common V8 engines that Ford produced over the years. Now, what's interesting is <clears throat> Ford actually produced the 302 cubic inch version as a production motor because they wanted to compete in the Trans Am Racing Series, which had a, a limit of 305 cubic inches. So the 302 is a four inch bore, three inch stroke motor. So it's a short stroke, big bore motor that was very competitive in the Trans Am Series and performance trim. And it's also a very good engine for building and modifying. It's reasonably priced and there's tons of aftermarket support for these small blocks. There wasn't a lot of difference between the 289 and the 302, simply a little bit of stroke. The, other than that, the engines are identical. And a lot of the same aftermarket parts are interchangeable between the 289 and the 302. They also had a version of the 302 that was called the Boss 302, which utilized the canted valve head design that was notorious on the 351 Cleveland. So it had a, the Boss 302 was a factory hot rod engine that had an upgraded cylinder head, basically the, the same cylinder head as the 351C and was used in many racing circuits, including NASCAR. Another variation of the Windsor engine that we need to get into is the 351 Windsor. Now the 351 Windsor is a very similar block and head design to the 289 and 302 with one exception. It had a taller deck height. So it had longer connecting rods, a taller piston, and it had a larger crankshaft with larger main and rod journals. And so the, the 351 was basically the big brother to the 302 and the 289 they wanted what ford wanted to do is they wanted a bigger cubic inch motor for some of the trucks some of the performance cars and so they just basically took the 289 302 made the same design taller it takes the same cylinder heads it takes a lot of the same external parts the same timing chain cover uh, the same exhaust manifolds and so forth it does have a wider intake manifold because of the taller deck height and so it's basically a larger version of the Windsor engines. The next engine I think we should look at is the 351 Cleveland. Now the 351 Cleveland, the only thing that the 351 Cleveland shares with the 351 Windsor is the cubic inch size, a four inch bore and a three and a half inch stroke. Other than that, they are completely different engines. They are similar in size and configuration. However, the 351C is a different block. It is a different set of heads. It's a different intake. It's, it's just a different engine altogether. The 351 Cleveland was not produced very long. It had an engine run of a few years and was popular as a performance engine in some of the Mustangs and the Torinos, those types of cars. The, the key to the 351's power was the cylinder head design, which had a canted valve design. They actually had several versions of that head, a two barrel version, a four barrel version that had larger valves and bigger ports. So the 351 Cleveland was basically a factory performance engine. It came out in the early 70s and was designed to was actually manufactured to compete in the muscle car world as some of the other manufacturers, 
However, as we progressed into the 1970s, the 351 Cleveland basically went out of production because of EPA emission standards and all of the things that happened with the gas crunch, the, the stringent restrictions that the EPA put on car manufacturers, the performance muscle cars started to actually wane in the mid 70s. And so a lot of, so the 351 basically went away. Now the 351 Windsor on the other hand remained as a mainstay of Ford all the way up into the roller cam and, and fuel injection days of the 90s. So the 351 Windsor was made for many, many, many years and is a very popular engine. There's tons of aftermarket support for the 351 Windsor. And so it is actually a really good choice if you want to build one of these smaller configuration engines. If, if you want to <clears throat> build a, a Windsor engine, a 351 is a really good choice. They're plentiful and you can get them in roller cam and factory roller cam blocks nowadays. And they, they actually have tons of aftermarket supports, much, much like the 302 and the 289. Now, there is one more 351, and that is the 351M. Some people call this the, the mod 351 modified. The M doesn't really stand for modified. Actually, Ford has never really made any kind of a distinction for that M. The, the M doesn't stand for anything according to Ford, it's just an M. Some people call it modified because it's a modified version of the 351 Cleveland. The 351M was an engine that came out in some trucks and passenger cars in the mid 70s and basically it was Ford's answer to the EPA restrictions. It was basically a smog motor. It was very low compression, had very poor flowing cylinder heads, and they also had a version of it that had a longer stroke, which was a 400. The 351M and the 400, the, the drawback to these engines is that there's really not a lot of aftermarket support as far as performance engines goes. There's some guys that have built these things and made them run, but for the most part, uh, they're just a really expensive engine. They have a different motor mount setup than the Cleveland, so they they don't they don't bolt in the same as a Cleveland block would. They also have a different bell housing pattern on the back, and it's it's actually a different block. It's not the same block as the Cleveland. It's similar, but it's a different block. And it was it was an engine that was basically designed for the low compression, low performance smog era. It was heavy, it got terrible gas mileage, and it did not have very good performance. As far as trying to pick an engine for a performance build, we recommend that you stay away from the 351M and the 400. If you want to build something that just has a stock V8 in it, no problem. They work okay, but they were really not the best performing engine that Ford ever made. There is another class of Ford engines now that was the 385 series. This was a very large engine and it had a lot of different cubic inch options available. The most common engines were the 429 and the 460. Now the 429, they did have a boss version of the 429 that was actually a very potent engine and Carroll Shelby was involved in, in some of the development of the performance versions of the 429. And the 429 was a, a production engine that was in the Mustangs. And it was also in some of the bigger cars. It was in the LTDs. It was in the, the, the big four-door cars of the early 70s. And some of these larger cars, the big four-door sedans from the 70s, a lot of them had the 429 in it in stock trim. And it was a very potent engine. It was reliable. It was strong, it put out good power. And so it, the 429 was a very good engine. 
they bumped that same design, that 385 design, up to a 460. Now we all know, everybody's familiar with the 460. The 460 is a very, very good engine. It's a large cubic inch engine. It's a physically large, in, large engine. I, I hesitate to call it a big block because Ford never really designated their engines as big block or small block. They simply had engine families. So the 385 family was a very large engine, what we might consider a big block. And they had a lot of truck versions of that were, that were actually somewhere over 500 cubic inches, but were not really found in production cars. But it was a very good, very reliable, very powerful engine. But again, it was very large and it was not fuel efficient. But if you wanted big power for a pickup truck or a muscle car, the 429, 460 was a really good choice and there was quite a bit of aftermarket support for them as well. That brings us to another engine family that Ford had, which is what we call the FE family. Now the FE was a completely different engine design. It was a skirted block produced from about 1958 through 76. And it started with the 332 cubic inch configuration. Now the, the 332 was found in some of the 1958 through 60 vehicles. A couple years later, they increased the stroke of the 332 and made the 352. Now most of you are probably familiar with the 352. The 352, was an engine that was dubbed the interceptor engine and it was used in police vehicles and the high performance version was right around 300 horsepower which was pretty respectable for 352 cubic inches in its day the next variation of that engine would be the 361 what they did is they just took the 352 and they bored it 50 thousandths over and they made a 360 361 ish cubic inches they called it the 361. Eventually, they would take that same block and engine configuration and put a longer stroke crank in it. And they came up with what they called the 390 cubic inches or the 390 FE engine. The 390 is by far one of the most popular FE engines that they ever produced. And it was a longer stroke crank with the same bore size as the 360, 361. The Next step in evolution from the 390, which was used in pickup trucks and cars across the board, Mercury, Ford, Lincoln, you name it. They came up with the 406. The 406 was a different block. It was a larger bore, but it shared the, the stroke with the 390. That lasted about two years. And the, the 406 was actually produced as a big bore short stroke motor to be more of a performance engine. The 406, evolved into what they called the 427. Now the 427 was basically a factory race motor. It was designed, the, the sanctioning bodies like NHRA and some of these other racing bodies said, you cannot use a motor in our racing circuit unless it is a production engine. So Ford produced the 427, although a lot of them were not put into production cars. It was available in production cars, but because of the huge cost of the engine, a lot of consumers didn't take the option of the 427. They just couldn't afford it at the time. And so there were some production cars that had that. It was available for production cars as an option. So technically it was a production engine, but it was a, a big bore short stroke engine that was used in NASCAR and NHR and some other racing circuits, a production engine. The 427 was a real powerhouse. They actually had an overhead cam version of it called the Cammer that had a single overhead cam that made well over 600 horsepower and featured a hemispherical or hemi type head much like the Chrysler Hemi. That was basically the factory race motor. They also made a 428 which was also a big bore motor that was available across the board. The 428 was much more affordable and was much more common as a bigger cubic inch engine for the larger vehicles like the Galaxies and the big Mercuries. And so the 428 today is kind of a hard engine to find. The 390s are much more plentiful. The nice thing about the FE platform, the, the 352, the 360 and the 390 was all a 4 to 4.050 bore. 
somewhere in that neighborhood. The nice thing is all those blocks were identical and it's very easy to put a stroker crank in those. You, you can build an engine that's 450 plus cubic inches with a stroker rotating assembly in the FE with no clearancing on the bottom of the block. It was a Y block that had a deep skirt in it and it had tons of room in the bottom of the engine. So the FE engine's very popular, very powerful, and it is probably the most one of the most extensive lines of engine that Ford ever produced during those years. And it was found in everything. Cars, trucks, heavy duty applications. They used them for irrigation pumps. They used them in industrial engines. Now you, you gotta understand Ford Motor Company was huge at the time. One of the things about Ford manufacturing is Henry Ford, it, he, he did everything from start to finish as far as raw materials. They actually had mines where they would dig the metal and the ore and the components out of the earth and they would fully process all of that into a new car. He had his own airport. He had uh, his own tri-motor airplanes, a whole f fleet of airplanes. So what the Ford Motor Company was, was this, this massive company, the biggest company in the world at the time, in the 50s and 60s. And so they just had division after division after division, engineering and manufacturing. And so there was literally dozens and dozens of variations of the FE engines and some of these other lines that were available. These engines are still out there today and you can find them and build them. The FE line of engines, I guess we could consider it a big block, even though Ford never used the big block, small block distinction, but it was a large bore spacing, large stroke, big bore engine, large, physically large engine that was very popular. It, it was reliable, it was strong, it was durable, and it was capable of making very impressive horsepower and torque numbers. So the 390 428 FE line is definitely something worth looking into for those of you, those enthusiasts who want to build something with big power. That is basically the f history of the Ford engines. Now I know I probably didn't get everything exactly right. I might have missed it by a year or two here or there. I might have got some horsepower and torque numbers off a little bit. I'm basically just going by memory. I know I'm in the ballpark. There's always one or two like Ford enthusiasts out there that write me a 3,000 word manifesto on what an idiot I am and how that I'm desecrating and destroying the purity of the, the, the Ford you know, cult. So, you know, don't do that. I'm sure I might have left some stuff out. I didn't get this exactly right on every single point. There's probably some variations. So if you wanna jump on and, and spend an hour and a half writing an essay correcting me, don't waste your time. If you wanna just say, hey, you know, here's something to add to this, and you make a comment that's two or three lines long, and even if you correct me, no problem. But, uh, you know, as, as far as you Ford purists out there that think that the world's going to end because I got something a little wrong, just stop. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Like and subscribe. If you like this type of video, we can do more. There's all kinds of other engine lines and products and brands out there that we can do. We could probably do a whole nother video on Ford and get a lot more in depth with this stuff. So I appreciate you watching, like and subscribe. I will talk to you very soon. Thanks.